Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a Couchois, a Eugene Henri Couchois study. He's one a 19th century French painter that I've studied for many, many years. As a matter of fact, I first went over to Europe. Um, I guess that would be right around 1998, and I started studying him some of his paintings over there. But anyway, what I pull forward here now, I know it's a Couchois. If it was me, I would put a little bit more shadows and stuff into some back areas. But overall, Couchois are really a great way for you to you know use it like I do the two brush technique use the bristle against the fusion get some different types of textures practice your brush calligraphy getting different types of little marks and put it in there and really concentrating on not overworking your colors on your palette that's kind of key so those colors are laid off on the brush and you get some of that nice color modulation through those marks and uh, that just adds a lot of interest and stuff. The frame that I have here I built for it this is like I've showed some of you that are in the the memberships and stuff how to build a frame. It costs me I this is about twenty dollars or so worth of materials to build a frame like this. It's one of the things we do here at the gallery is to do a lot of frames, a lot of building of it. And I have some videos on there uh, exactly how I go about building in the membership sense of building linen line. These is, this is a nice, this is a beautiful rough linen, uh, linen lined uh, frames like this. They're really super easy um, and a lot easier than a lot of people think. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. This paint is just super thick. I mean, it's just bumpy thick right in there. It's really great. I dried it really well and I gave it one coat. I just gave it one coat of satin varnish, of the heritage satin varnish. I have a varnish video up onto the channel too for those of you that um, wanna watch that, you know, all that. I also took the time to, let's see, he's right back there. <laughs> this side. Everything in the camera is reversed sometimes, so back over there. Finished up that little boy portrait. Now it'll be up on the channel here in the next day or two, uh, showing you some of that, um, those uh, those bister, uh, bister techniques that were used by the masters in the 18th and 19th centuries, and uh, which is a really, again, a nice master study. And I'll show you how I do the, the portraits and stuff with that. Those, are, those go really fast. And, you know, I know, I know some of you are not portrait painters. I'm not. This is like my, only my eighth one that I've ever done. Um, but portraits teach your eye a lot about color tone, quality of color, color tone. And so I really, really encourage you, especially you beginners, to try some of the portraits because that really helps define your eye for getting the right type of color. And I'll explain more about that in that particular video, okay? So those of you that are in the memberships that, that support the channel, uh, I don't know if a lot of you don't know that, you know, our channel here is a free channel. It's supported by... Um, everything that we give to the industry so it is you know for your support of it stuff really helps us out as well um, but everyone that is in the memberships I'll put uh, the photos the reference photos of the Couchois one I'll put it in a, re a photo of my final version of it and uh, so you can have some uh, some reference as you go about painting it okay so give it a try and you can make it any size if you want to make a smaller study of it and stuff you can, but it, it's it's just it's you know when you get all these textures on it, it's just a floral full of life, and I just I love the light and the dark and how, the color and more than anything else, I think it's all of the marks, all the textured marks and stuff in it, especially around into this area, just really help. Fun study. We got a lot more of those to do. We're going to do some studies like this of some of the masters too, and those of you that love to paint westerns with me, we'll do a study of Remington because he was you know he is. Like like the, uh, you know, the undisputed master of all of the Westerns and his techniques were really great. And so we'll do some of those. So hopefully uh, some of you will become members as well along the channel, all right? Okay, thanks so much, guys. And I look forward to painting with you again. We'll do the boy. We'll do some more flowers, some Westerns. Lots more coming. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. I've created my own work for almost 40 years as an artist, but every, at least once or twice a month, I go back and do a master study, always, to refresh my, my uh, mind. And doing master studies, if you're, you know, they, they help you with your creativity. 
They really, really do. I've been a, you know, a creator of an artist. I've made over 5,000 videos. I've written 69 different books, taught in 29 different countries, 29 different universities in 29 different countries and stuff. And, you know, creativity is something that the masters can give you just by studying them and painting them. So you should always, always, and I do even today, recreate the masters all the time. So we're going to paint this light to dark, and I, I want to use and get some of this buried. I'll let maybe a little bit of this come lighter, and I'll let that medium beige just kind of show through again into the, uh, into the background there. And we'll pull some of that around like that. That works kind of nice. We get a little bit of dark. Now this is a little still a little too warm right there, so maybe I'll take a bit of my burnt sienna and my blue. Here. I'm always looking and maybe even a touch of that red violet again get that in there that's a nice dark maybe a bit more blue I'm so used to you know you paint the ultramarine blue if you're using the thalo blue I use the ultramarine blue then the thalo blue in this one because he paints a lot of he has a bunch of corn flowers in there and those will paint really easy with the ultramarine blue I might put out which I probably will a bit of thalo blue too I love thalo blue for its power that's a bit darker, a little bit cooler, and that's good. Right in there like that. We'll let that nice deep shadow. Now see, it's a little different than what you have in some other Ala Prima's, like when we're doing landscapes and stuff, and I'm always talking with you about in landscapes how you do shadows transparent and lights more opaque. This is a little different. Um, it gets this nice rich color right down in there moving through. Now, we're gonna add and I'm going to uh, go to a, a, a bit of a smaller brush so I can work it quite a bit. But we're going to add some grade. So we'll get some more blue into this. Some medium white into this. Some of our... I've studied his colors for so long. He used ultramarine blue. Um, but I've studied his colors for so long that uh, you know I know him pretty well. Let's get a little green in here. We'll model it. A little medium white, Dave, not white. We want to keep this into the mid values, around six, seven here. That's a good, kind of a bluish gray, maybe even a little bit of our medium beige in there. Some of these grays, these will all work in here. And I'm just gonna start to add, this is gonna be some of this different kinds of through light here, just like that. And just like that. Now, that's the light that's coming through this way. We'll warm that just a bit here with some medium white. And I'm gonna hit that right in here. Now I wanna, I'm using a one inch brush and I wanna do very small little movements here. This will get some interest into the background. We'll go up, we might even climb this up over into here and we're going to do this a couple of times, push this light through. See, that gives us this warm to gray, a lot of interest in this painting that I really like. Might even push a little bit of green burnt sienna into that. Change that over to get some of those tones in there. See, that's a real pretty tone. And we'll, as we go over to this thin color, you'll get some brush marks. And after this dries and we do it again, and you know, maybe a couple of times, that won't happen anymore as we build color. But in the beginning, that's gonna happen. And uh, we'll go a little burnt sienna green right down here, pick up some of those tones. And that'll work out here. I don't even know sometimes why I sketch because I just end up covering it up, but oh well. It's part of the process of, of the idea and the painting and you, you know, you've got to let your ideas kind of gel a little bit. Okay, so maybe even some warmer yellows. A little bit of yellows. Color, colors of the composition we'll use in through the background here, but they'll be more toned, softer, mid-values here. And I'll be taking some of the colors of our container here and painting them back up in here. I've painted this. He used these uh, kind of oriental containers a lot 
and I've painted them a lot, a lot of the different ways he's done. And this is a bit different one here. And so, there we go. And we'll just get rid of some of those brush marks there, just lightly raise up over it. That sets a, a nice feel for it. I might go a little burnt sienna yellow. I love that kind of a warm tone right up here. I'm just looking at how the tones transition. I don't want to create a line because uh, this is actually, it's light, but it feels a little cooler than what's going on there in the shadow. So, and I don't want to create a, 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 you know, real divided line. So I do want to carry some of this color right across, let it diminish right over down as I get to this deeper core rich shadow color right down there. There we go. That'll be pretty. Sets up a nice thing. Now let's get some here. Let's just take, and you know, I'm sitting here looking at this and I've got just a little bit of blue out here. I love the power. I love painting with ultramarine blue, but ultramarine blue compared to the thalocyanine blue is such a weak blue. And a lot of times I'll use this and use this just as, because the tiniest bit of this goes a long way. And this, this, this um, thalo and, and the uh, medium white really make a nice container color right away. But uh, we'll put some ultramarine in that as well. And a little bit of white. Now, the medium white is just black, yellow, and white. And so it's just a shortcut color that I have out here and why I'm using it. And so we'll mix this up here. A little bit, get close to it. Not perfect, but we'll get close to that. That's pretty close. It's a little bit green, but that's okay because we're going to paint it so many different ways. And this is my one inch brush. I'm just going to quickly bang this up. My flowers are going to come right down into this area. So I'm just going to go right up into that a bit. Pretend those flowers aren't there and cover it over. Because if you paint around, it, it by darn if it doesn't look like you painted around. So don't paint around. Just paint through. And we'll give just a little lower ellipse to this because this type of container bends down just a bit. And we'll push some of this on and different, and I'll leave it all modeled like this, different brush marks and stuff like that because that's gonna add a lot to, the, to it as we get going. Now, as we go over to that side, let's cool off that side. Let's get a, a bit more blue into that, maybe even a touch of the red, which will help gray that. See how that grays that down makes a nice cooler kind of a, a gray. Let's uh, even add a touch of violet into that here. That'll cool that down even more. We're going to change colors so many times. So this is just your first look. And I always tell everybody with your first look, it doesn't have to be perfect. Get the color in because we're going to change it so much. Let's get it down there, make sure we get a little bit of that ellipse there. So we'll get the, the shadow side. Now, take some of this color and go through, especially if light is coming from the tops and you see this, this is the apex of the here, the whitest part of it. So you would have a little bit of cooler, almost shadow color coming to the container below that because light is up here on the top. Light will be lighter right up in here. And so we'll push a little bit of this shadow, not so much that it's the same color as the side, but it will get a bit of that right down there, just so you can start to see it. Let's get that just a bit heavier here. Model that up. Maybe a touch of that cooler color right up in there like that. We might even take a bit, vary this a bit. Let's take a little phthalo blue, a little bit of of uh, the medium beige, which are colors I like, and just toss that in. We'll paint that container very specifically, but that kind of gets a block in. So what we're going to be doing is kind of just blocking in the areas, putting in major forms of color, and I'm going to do that. Now, in looking at his flowers, he has some smaller yellow flowers that I can't really identify. The blue ones that are here, 
that I see throughout here. And as you can see, see right back there. That's why I, and I put that up. I should have told you that about it. I have a black and white here, but I'm looking back up there at that. That's my big color monitor. That's what I normally look at. And you can see everything is about the same size. I try to size the photos and everything when I put it up on my big color monitor. So I look at that. And I like to look at a color monitor more than anything else because that uh, really shows me more colors than what I'm going to get in a printout, okay? So I can see more colors. But we're going to have these blue corn flowers in here, and then we're going to have, and, and I've looked at those, and because of that, you know, you, there's so many five petal different kinds of white flowers out there from polentas to, you know, you, uh, you name it. But the, and it'll have to be a, a variety of wild rose just because of the leaf that he has associated with it. Those are wild roses. So we're going to paint that. So what I'm going to do is like look into that area that I see, which is going to be like right around in here and that size of it there, I'm going to pick out one of the darker gray colors that I'm going to be using within those flowers and maybe, and I do like burnt sienna and my blues. Those are some of my favorite grays here and this will go with the container as well. Just maybe a bit more burnt sienna, so slightly warm and let's just knock out so it's just a little bit, you can see a little bit of difference between it and the uh, the container, but let's just knock out the area here of the uh, that that those flowers will occupy, and I'm going to come through some of these areas, and this is basically how I'm going to draw my design. We'll put some whites in there. We'll come right back up, right up here. There'll be one right up there, right out here. There'll be a few right out there and there'll be and I'm and I, I love to paint like this this is just more casual let's put one right up here and maybe one turned out right up here don't want to go too much lighter than that I'm getting a little bit higher than what he is on his composition but sometimes when I make them a little big like this and I'll and I'll do that and I'm, I'm very casual relaxed I'll make it a little big um, that gives me room to paint into it with the background colors later. Now, if you want to come in and just model in a little more white to it, and what this does is just model the color. See, just model. That's what I like to do, is model everything. Model, I use the word model when I don't mix the colors very well. And so you get some different little tones coming out. And I like that. So we'll just model that up. So I'm just looking for areas of color. Now let's go hit that big cornflower. Some of our blues. Here both our blues. Maybe even some of these lights here. But these blues. Lots and lots of these blues here. And not mixed real well here. Let's just drop some of that in really heavy right down over in here right in there. Okay, blues are going to come right in, filling up into this spot, really, right in through here. And you see as I mix with some of those other wet background colors, that's all going to become part of it. Sometimes I'll do this and just slide those colors together. And what that does is it takes white into blues, blues into whites, and it's just going to make a nice, uh, you know, harmony of colors coming through. We'll jump up over that. We'll put a bit of blue right up there. Some of that can come right in there. A mark or two right out here. That coming out. That'll be good. His composition is a little more round right there than I have it coming about a third of the way in. Now, I don't want to though, you know, and I'll fight this. I don't, I want this to be mine. I want to capture his brushwork, his brush calligraphy, and I showed some of you in the last one when I did my portrait thing. If you're not familiar with the term brush calligraphy, because I find a lot of artists aren't, and it's, um, it's a term that the old masters used to use to describe the brush marks that are left on the surface. And so it's, you know, I really want to study his calligraphy, like how he, he does this kind of movements and stuff through here that we're going to get rather than getting the exact copy of a painting. 
and uh, so but we're gonna make a nice painting so we'll, we'll get to there so I'm gonna paint the majority of the large elements here the smaller you know little ones that we have out here we have some small violet flowers yellow flowers and stuff like that I'll add those in just a bit you could come in and, and add some of that now but I probably won't I probably will stay away from that just a bit okay and uh, I have a couple more little areas of blue I should probably make a color note of. One's going to be right up over here. So we'll make a note there. We'll have some down on the table and stuff, but I have to put the table in first. Uh, maybe a bit of that blue right in there. So sometimes you can just take your brush like this and just kind of scrub that and you get these just lovely marks. Because see, I use this paint so heavy with some of that extender. It's going to stay wet here for a good hour, 30 minutes to an hour here during the painting. Okay, now let's just take a bit of this and just drag right through some of our lights. Again, a lot of this will cover up, but again, what it does is it just creates a harmony. So I'm looking through the colors. Sometimes what I do with, with some of his is I just pull through like this to blur everything and then started the painting. And I really like that. That uh, works really, really well. Okay. So that does, that works there. Now, what I'm going to also read is some of the modeling from some of the other colors. So I look at that thing up there. We've got kind of a warm yellow gray here. So I'll take some yellow, maybe some, some of my blue, some of my uh, medium beige. That's just a touch green. So a bit more yellow, maybe a touch of medium white into that. Keep it into those beiges and stuff. It won't go quite as green here, just a bit. And let's just, well, that's a pretty, that's gonna be a pretty color in here. Let's model through a few touches of that. We're gonna use that into the painting as well. So we'll pick up some of these warms. We'll use that when we go in to paint the flowers here. And I'm gonna to have to let some of these flowers tack up just a bit, but let this happen. Drag through, let that happen. That's all good. That's just all good blurry color that's gonna make a really pretty flower when we go to paint it. Now, let's take and add a bit of the red, naphthol red light, nice warm red there. Let's add a few little touches of that through here. A rainbow of colors, that's good. And we're gonna let that dry up for just a minute and I'm going to come forward here. Just going to go right in here with this. We're going to come forward here. Let's add some extender. Add some medium white, medium beige, a little bit of all these colors because all these colors are going to go right down here into the front. And we'll go up. So we're letting that, I've got that, that in there. Compositionally wise, it's in, but I want to let it uh, tack up a bit. We want some of these grays from the composition to pull down. So we're going to take some of our flower colors and everything right into here and pull them down. But right through here to the center, he really does a beautiful job. I love his use of color. He's pulling that down and then going right back to the siennas, even some of the grayed siennas here, out onto the sides over here again, a little warmer. And we'll come up right about in here. We'll just make a quick note of that table line here. Right in there like that. Let's pull some of this over here the other side. See that blues and some of those colors? You just can't paint, I can't uh, replace dirty brush painting, letting some of these colors just Actually, you know, you don't mix them on your palette. You let the, the brush marks of what you're doing and stuff mix them onto the painting. And that works so well. Let's continue that line out here. That'll be our table line. It's a long ways to go, but this gives us some of this idea. We'll let some of these grays, these beautiful grays happen here. 
right out there. Move your, move your brush and all kinds of that. Over mix that just a little bit. See how that all became the same? Stop painting. <laughs> I'll change it. I mean, I'll, I'll get it. But <laughs> you know that just happens. He has a beautiful dose of burnt sienna right in there. We're going to be doing this so many times anyway. It's immaterial. And we'll probably use up all this paint and I'll probably have to get a little bit more here. We'll use some of that. That sets that up. Let's grab some of these grays and blues here. That's all beautiful compositional shadow there. Boom through. So he uses the chiaroscuro of the light. And chiaroscuro, which was, of course, is Italian and part of the techniques, but the Dutch back in the 17th century used the chiaroscuro. And especially Bethesar van der Oost, he was one of the first ones I spent, he was one of the first Dutch masters that I studied and painted his technique for years and years and years. Um, but he started using that. And chiaroscuro basically is the light flowers, which is what you see over here, go against the dark, and the dark flowers go against the light. And what that happens is when they, in the old days, you set up a composition and you put a light on it, the, you know, you have a light side and a dark side. Well, what they started to do was move your subject away from that wall a little bit. Now then what happens is the light comes this way, flows through the composition, hits the wall back over here. So the, since the light is over here, the light side, that's the shadow side, but then it's reversed for the wall. And do that sometimes, look at that sometimes. When you, when you do lighting, and I did lighting studies for years and years and years, a little grungy there. Um, the, uh, when I did these lighting studies for years and years and years, you know, you find that the, the uh, uh, you know, the light colors, the light colors go right up against the shadow of the background and the shadow colors of your composition go right up against the light if you move the composition away from the background. So, but see all of this working. Now as it starts to dry up just a bit, the acrylics get just a touch sticky. It's really easy to do some of this fun stuff. Even take some of these grays and blues here and walk those right over here for a little more interest before we hit to those real core darks. So that gives you just a really pretty composition here. I'm just going to hit a couple more areas here. A little light, a little warm here. Right up here like this. We'll pull through this one a bit, pull across a bit. Lift the pressure on your brush if you want it to soften out a bit. Here, I just don't want to create too much of a light dark situation, so I'll make a pull through a couple of times until I get some medium tones going through there. Maybe some nice, I love his nice warm tones, yellows, burnt siennas that he uses right back through here. Pulls those color, the flower colors down so nice right there. And uh, probably should straighten out my wonky table here. But uh, there we go. That works pretty good. And he used, of course, this is early in the painting, really early in the painting, but you could fix a couple of value things. I've got a, that back edge of that table, too light, so I'll take a little bit of my burnt sienna and let's put a little green in there. That pulls colors down from our composition. We'll push a bit of that in there. And there we go, that'll set that right back. Sometimes pull some of those colors, different brush marks. Get some calligraphy here. There, like that. We'll let that sit there now. It's gonna have a heck of a lot more, you can see, but we're starting to capture some of that, uh, some of that idea and stuff here of that, okay? And this is like, oh, it's just starting to tack up, so I might be able, get in there and start working on it. When I'm working on those types of flowers, especially with uh, Courchois, he did a lot of real thick painting. As a matter of fact, he started out a little thin and then built it thick and thick and thick. And so I plan on doing basically the same thing. And so 
Uh, what we're gonna, we have to do though with the acrylics is let these dry, tack up just a bit or we'll start to get too much mixing and I don't wanna get too much mixing in here. But so I'm gonna start out here, I'm gonna take some of my white right down here, right into this kind of gray kind of color here, dirty. I love painting in a dirty brush, especially when I'm doing whites because they can pull out so much interest. And what I'm gonna do is just a, a little quick shaping, sizing basically, of the white five petal flower that's gonna be here, the main wild rose coming forward here, just so I can start to pick it out of the, out of the composition here where it is. I'm not going to do wild and crazy things, just some of it. Just, and I step way back at my brush. You're going you're gonna to get a lot of grabbing of color. And you know, if you're painting a lot wet and wet with this, which is what I used to do when I paint in oils quite a bit, you know, you always put on like a little bit of white and then if you touch it one or two too many times, it just disappears. Well, the same thing's going to happen with the acrylics here. So we want to just Put in some color, get out, let it start to tack up so we can work it later. Let's put in a, a bit of a, it's gonna be a petal right here of this one. So I'll build this here. And so when I, I'm not looking for, to, I don't wanna develop textures yet because texture into the paint will uh, impede my ability to draw basically draw the design later on if I change my mind so I want to come through do a little bit of what we call just low I always call it low res shaping of the flowers just a, a bit of it here where some of these colors and tones and stuff might be what they might be like right back through here I just might paint some suggestive flower shapes but not perfect flower shapes back here some suggestive with some of these colors. Hit these blues and stuff back there. Let some of that just hit in there, you know, and and uh, not not shape them up too well, but not have any kinds of texture. So I'm going to come through and paint what I call it's just a low resolution, blurry edges, you know, not uh, not perfect, no textures into it. So I'll work it a couple of times so I. I don't have any textures here, and I'll start shaping up some of these uh, and sizing up, mostly sizing up. And so, and if I get it too big, it's easy to paint it down. But I'll start sizing up a low resolution of my of my painting here, what it could be here, just like this, real soft like that and this one's going to have a petal coming down this way but I don't always get involved that much to it I just start to give the impressions of the flowers and stuff that's what I want to do just the impressions here of the flowers here where they might be right there like that okay and um, I'll come in and add some lighter blues and stuff like that. And we'll let this kind of, and then I'm going to let this kind of tack up quite a bit. And that, from the feel of it, is going to take about 20 minutes or so. So I'm going to go get a cup of coffee or something. Wait, I put just a touch too much. It's extended. Well, you know what? We could do this. Is I didn't put any of that in there. Let's work for just a second on the, uh, on the vase here, too. I'm going to go back to my, when I start the vase or something like this, a container, um, I'm gonna start it out with the larger brush and paint with the larger brush as long as possible because that's gonna give me the greatest look. I'm gonna make up some really light. We're gonna get this right up about an eight or so, the vase light color, and that's gonna come right in here. We'll push some of that right down here like this. Boom, there's that light of the vase, okay? And you can see it with the black and white. You can see right where that light's gonna come through here, right in there like that. And see, I can just slide over here where my colors are still wet and nice. I got some of these really pretty kind of dirty gray colors 
soften those edges just a bit. Work some of those colors in there and work this light a couple times here. See, I like that. See that? That's the unmixed brush, the mottled brush, and that paints vases and containers really well. As I come into this area here where I want it to soften out, I just, I lift the pressure of the brush so it just barely grabbing onto the surface. It's almost like the Dutch scumbling technique that I've showed you in so many videos as well. We'll work this on, then we'll let everything kind of dry up. This will give us a, a bit of the heading towards the vase here, or the look of the vase that we want here. Right down there like that. Grab some of these blues, maybe a touch of that violet, just a touch of that in there. That's kind of nice. Push that in as well. See, I want all these colors. See some of those pretty colors in there. We'll grab some of this right over the edge of this there. And, you know, I'm off just a touch into the value. I'm just a touch on the value wrong, but that, that doesn't, I'm looking for color, more warms and cools and modeling of color more than getting an absolutely perfect value. That's what I'm, let's gray this up over here a bit more, a bit more blue. Burnt sienna, blue, all of those, but slightly heavy on the blue, make beautiful grays that are gonna paint this container really pretty. See all this model gray? See all that mottled gray that comes down through there? And then you can slide it over a bit lighter, maybe a few touches with just a touch more blue in it is real pretty, so you put a couple touches like that, a couple touches lighter, and you let all of that, don't work it too much, because then you blend it too much. You let all of that just kind of sit in there, and that's how we're gonna paint this thing many times, okay? So, yeah, I'm gonna let it dry for a minute. I'm gonna let that dry for about 20 minutes or so, and then uh, we'll come back and I'll work through, work through again, start shaping up the flowers. So, so everything just doesn't disappear on me. I gotta let it tack up so then when I come in with the next set of colors, it'll stick to it a lot better, okay? All right, we'll let it tack up and I'll be right back. Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, you saw where I was putting in some darker blues. Now I used the uh, Thetal Blue and Red Violet uh, for, to make that nice dark color. We're gonna really put some dark core colors in there. And then I added a little bit of the uh, Burnt Sienna back there, so it grays. So these are much more intense than back up there. Get those darks in. And you saw I added another flower in here, moved that one out just a bit. Um, 
but everything is now nice and dry so I can uh, continue to uh, to work on it here adding some more colors now I'm going to switch over uh, this is a, a number eight uh, fusion filbert you know he used cat tongues he used uh, which is a filbert brush um, and rounds and uh, flat sometimes but the flat gives you a smaller uh, you know a flatter mark and the filbert will give you more of a rounded head you can do both you can do either one it's your calligraphy but uh, you know sometimes I like to try to get a little close to what their calligraphy is now so this is uh, kind of dry in here I'll be able to work my colors right in here and what we want to do is when you're painting a couchoir like this is you want to do very little manipulation of the mark or the stroke on the piece here you want to do it on your palette so it's quick marks so if I'm going to make a petal here take a bit of the blue model this up into my brush here like this to get the kind of the tone a little bit of the color going in it that I want to make that uh, mark that's going to be that petal you know for this one that's right here so let's just go ahead and, and push down just a bit to get that nice wide width to it and you put maybe a second one but then it'll start to blend and so you've got to um, you know so you, you can't do that too much mix up mark you know model up here some of these tones let's get a push in a little more gray maybe for the back one back here and make a mark and uh, maybe a, a touch of blue or so into that so that you see and this is what you get see the different colors and stuff that you get in there that's what you do and that's couchois and so you don't want to touch that too many times you want to you want to manipulate the colors here on your palette this will be a lighter petal up into the front so let's just pick up a bit more here sometimes I'll, I'll take that mark a little bit more here and I'm putting on some textures rolling using different sides of the brush and I will uh, you know I will come back and harmonize by maybe adding a mark of that color into that petal maybe uh, smaller little mark right into that color but by the time you do this four five six times around these flowers you're going to get some really pretty colors of your flowers here as these colors start to come off let's push that in now that's going to be let's just change that up a bit so I just add a little blue sometimes you can add a little violet those are pretty into these as well you know, I mean, I do a lot of couchois with some violet. See, isn't that a pretty color? And you can add a few of those marks other places of your flowers here. But you try to do it when you're painting here. You, you try to, uh, and see, I'll roll my brush onto the sides, but you try to, to uh, get as many colors, not a rainbow of colors, but get as many colors in there as you can here. So... And I just love what happens, happens here and just so just work that so that builds that flower. Now see it's gonna need some more harmony through it, like this light, this light mark can come a little bit more, bring that up towards that other petal. And that's what you'll look for. You want the light color here because this is gonna be one of our center of interest flowers, so you want to get some of those light colors up in there but you uh, uh, also want to uh, get a variety of the colors let's just put a quick little mark now that got a bit big so I'm just gonna leave it there for a second and uh, let's put a little blue of that container right out here so what I'll do is that got a little bit big there so what I'll do is I'll negative paint it back and this is what he does a lot take a little bit and this has got to be these flowers out here anyway where we're gonna just use the points and create the cornflower kind of idea of petals so rather than you know take off or anything like that I paint back into it so we're gonna do that a lot back through here and so just quick movements through we can so you're going to see a, a lot of colors laid out into the palette like this moving down. This is the marks, like when I do these little cornflowers and stuff here. You know, this is the, the 
I'll use like the chisel of this brush here to start the, the little petals coming in like that so they get a bit more movements and I'll use the tip of the brush with some of the light and just hit the tips of them here get some different maybe a bit of that change the blue over from that ultramarine over to the thalo so it goes just a bit blue green here so it gets a bit different there see and it really it, it seems like oh boy this is going to take forever but no it really doesn't after you get going and you get the ideas of it you just don't want to paint too long with the same color so you want to get some more so I'll put on like that light, see, and then I'll come back with some darks and take out. What I look for in this more than anything else is just a, a really good movement to my colors. So I want this kind of splash of light coming through here. And see, if I get that light too heavy, which I did right there, I'll just pick up some blue in my brush and paint back through it. And this is what a lot of the a la prima painters, the floral painters, the impressionistic floral painters of the 19th century did. This is how they did it, working back and forth. Very, very little uh, blending or manipulating the colors too long. They would paint and paint and paint like this. And I love it. And it was fun. And you can like sketch in the shape of a flower there. And after you get going, after a you know, good 15, 20 minutes of doing some of this stuff, this will really start to relax your brush and they'll start to look better. And usually what happens to me is I end up going back through some of my other flowers again to make some other marks or ideas and changing them around a bit as I get some of the feel for the movement that I want these to have. So I'm going to come through and start to shape up again. So I'll work back and forth several flowers. Let's start to shape up this one and change maybe a bit of that blue in there here. So you see that nice movement of that color in there. That's what we want. Let's get a bit of that grayness there. And come in like that. And sometimes you just lift the pressure of your brush and just let it kind of drag and you get what we call the granulated stroke. Get some of that. Just really a fun way to paint. Just really loose. Let yourself go and just kind of paint that stuff in there. Let's take a little gray here. Sometimes I'll tap a little gray and move it in and out of that center out into the flower to uh, calm down the petals a bit, add a touch more interest and stuff into them. See? And, uh, but change that gray. Great, great, awesome grays for this palette is the blue and the burnt sienna. Those work really well. You can have some yellows and violets. You know, all your traditional grays that we talk about here and start pushing and shoving the brush and doing some different things and move your colors around get not wild but maybe a little crazy <laughs> in some of the painting because then your flowers are going to look the best okay so We'll build this, and we'll probably end up doing this a, a couple of times as we go through and build it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the whites and the blues. I'll show you a few minutes of doing that, but this is what your palette should look like at the end here. You should have all of these colors. Those are See, that's your flower right there. That's your flower. Maybe with a little light highlight right there. That's your flower, okay? And that's what you got to get. That, you got to lift that up and just put it right up into there. Try not to paint too long on that with the color because it'll all become one, okay? Alrighty, let's hit it and I'll show you a few things.
Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, you saw some of the, the stuff that I did here, working uh, working it out. I changed the direction of this one here. And it, it's easy to do. You just put some of the background color in there. And, it, and with this type of technique, it's actually prettier if you don't use exactly the same colors you used before. Make it something that's close, but you know it, you capture more more color, more color movement, and that's the key. That's what we're going to do now. Now I'm also going to uh, show you um, here. This is a uh, this is a uh, number four um, bristle round that is the same same manufacturer, Global Art Supply, or Jan or it's in our line now, Jansen Art Line, and you know it, I really like it. What Sargent always says about. Uh, you know, when you're talking about the a la prima technique, and he painted during the same time as Couchois, and it was like, you load that brush full of nice, juicy paint, and that's, and you manipulate those, those edges and stuff, and the bristle is wonderful for that because it holds so much paint. And I'm also going to be adding some open medium to this as well. So when I come in to work like the edges of the flowers, I'm going to make some piles of paint here and model some of this up so that I get some different colors. But I'm really gonna load up the brush here so you can see the brush is quite loaded with paint so that when I lay these down and I can use it in different things, you'll see, and I can use the stiffness of the bristle to drag over the surface. Now most of this is dry, so that's why this works so well. Um, and I'll just drag this over the surface in a couple of different ways. See, just tap, roll and touch and you get some different types of modeling of the color. Now all of our hands are different and this is what really is going to make the the technique shine is that uh, you know we're going to all touch the surface just a little different. You get that nice big textured paint and you can see it. Sometimes he would roll his brush to get a different look and you can physically when you look up close at his paintings you know, in real life, when I, that's why I always go over to Europe to study him, um, you see that rolling mark that he does. It's just wonderful. It's just good stuff. It's just so I can drag some of this in to create some different edges, push around a bit. And I like that. And this is what I'll use to uh, do all, you know, like in the blue flowers here. We'll take and see. Don't mix it up real well. So you get some modeled like that color, and this is what makes these little tiny marks, and that's what they do. And I, you saw me come through, just you know, I'll move through and touch in little areas, as I you know, as I'm painting, to and that adds the little sparks and stuff that you have, you know, into the painting. And we'll be doing that with some other you know types of flowers and stuff, but. Uh, we still have ways to go before we can get there. But some of these nice blues and stuff just work really well down here. See, as I restate some of these edges and stuff here onto this uh, flower down here, see? And it just gives you some color difference. And not only color difference, but what's more important is a different brush, a way different brush like this than what I've used so far. The difference between the fusion and this is like night and day. Um, and it's going to give you a completely, totally different run of marks, which uh, is wonderful. And I'll be using this also, we'll create some light color. And in the front of this vase, uh, you know, we're going to go more to that, uh, that um, ultramarine blue. And then we'll grab some ultramarine blue, a little bit of our toner here, get some of these grays, different colors. And I'm going to lay in some color now here, some thicker color, and I'll paint right up, and, I'll, and I'm going to leave some of this brushwork. So let's get this nice heavy, and this is the thing, the, the Couchois and the, the Impressionist painters there, they painted with a tremendous amount of paint. And we'll roll some of this paint on, get some of that that look there. Now, the other thing that I will do sometimes, let me grab a different brush here, 
is, uh, you know, I, I follow all different kinds of the Impressionists, of the Victorian Impressionist painters, and some of them, you know, follow that, you know, more, cha you know, a little bit more transparent stuff up into the shadows. And so I'll take this other brush, like the Fusion here, and I'll work those edges so I have one set of calligraphy that's going up into, into some of these lights, and then another set of calligraphy that, you know, coming from my my fusion here that might be going down here towards the base and so a little bit of the gray color now you know and you know how you do it, it that's up to you but using a two brush technique is wonderful and you see a lot of all the prima artists use two brush techniques and uh, you know and that that's up to you whether or not you're going to do something like that but it does work you know the the thing the main thing here uh, is to get some differences. Now see, see all that beautiful difference into that um, vase that you get from the softer fusion and then the more powerful, stiffer bristle. And this is what, uh, you know, you, where we can really get some very unique, nice looks here. You can do a little scumbling with this to Break that just a bit here. Hold your brush slightly different and you get different looks. But I like to step way back when I'm using the bristle like this. I like to step way back and, you know, get that, get that more casual expression of the edge. But see all of the, the beautiful look as we start to develop this, this vase now. And we'll do that light edge. Just drag this brush right down that edge there. And, you know, you can tell on his painting there because of the wonky little lines and stuff that he gets that he does that with. It's not a rigger or, you know, a liner or anything like that. He does it with his bristle. And because you can see that, you know, into his... Uh, into his lines, that they're done really casual, very much all the prima here. So, yeah, just fun little ways of working those, those edges here. And this is what I'll do, and you know, and it's, I'll work bef between the, the two brushes sometimes. If I, f especially if I feel that, you know, I'm getting too much same too much, everything is just too much the same, then I'll go to the two brush technique here. But again, like I say in so many things, this is yours, this is your calligraphy, you know. When I started to paint other types of flowers that you see, you know, where, uh, you know, my very popular roses and stuff that I paint, I took a lot of couchois techniques and kind of, just made them into mine, you know, took, took, took the influence. And this is what I say is, and I'm very serious about this, especially with you, the beginners up here, you try all this stuff. Um, we don't, we copy the masters, okay? You do a couple paintings, or more than a couple. You, you copy the masters, you copy them. But you don't, you don't make that part of your technique. What you do is you allow their brush to change your brush. So you've got to have this, so you basically, you've to be a casual painter, to do beautiful roses, to do beautiful flowers, you have to find that casual nature inside of you. Copying will not get you that casual nature because it becomes really stiff. But you use them, like Couchois brush, I lose those ideas of the bristle, I use the ideas of some of those things to change my brush and how I hold my brush, how I approach my brush, okay? So, and that's what we do. That's what you try to do. Um, and so you use their brush, you study, you paint, you paint, them, you, you paint the masters and everything and use their brush to change your brush. Now I'm gonna just use my fusion here and darken down this corner, but see the different ways in which I use my brush here. So I get some of that nice movement there, okay? So we have that, I'm gonna be doing that, and I'm gonna take some more of that burnt sienna here and some of these blues and stuff here. And we're gonna drag down this side to darken that a bit, get some more color 
different types of color up here. Kind of like this. And once I get some of this worked out, then I will just real casually here start to grab, whoops, that's too light. Grab the, let's cool that too, a little bit of violet. A little violet on the side there just helps cool it. We'll just start to grab, yeah, that's pretty color. See the, the volume of color that I have there? And uh, I like that. See, I'm, I'm looking for these subtle soft color variations down like that. That's what makes a pretty boss. Now, I'm going to be, you know, I still have yellow flowers and leaves and stuff to drop down through here, okay? But while this is this is wet like this, I might take uh, some blues here, some of my darker phthalo blues, a little more toned here, and a little bit of open medium. A little tone it with some of this burnt sienna. And we'll just lightly kind of find the pattern here that's uh, kind of making up this vase here. And maybe some of that ultramarine blue in there. So it doesn't go quite so blue-green. But we'll just kind of casually sketch this in just like this. And you see, you get rough little edges. See, that just kind of matches this thing perfectly there as you're doing that. You get those rough little edges. So I'm going to do that. Oh, you can watch some of it. And I just use the tip of this little this little brush like this. We'll do that. And I'll, I'll kind of sketch that all in. And then um, I'm going to start some of the leaves. You can just watch me. I'm just going to use some of the greens and some of the yellows. We'll start that so we don't run too short on time on, time on this, okay? All right, I'll see you uh, in just a few minutes. We'll show you how I do that, okay? Just some blues, a little burnt sienna, and a bristle brush, and casual attitude. I'll see you in a minute.
Okay, welcome back. So now, you know, many times in the past I've used like the edge of a uh, flat or a filbert to do some of the drawing out there. This time I think I'm going to do the, the little bristle. So we have some dark, some dark violets. And so you can see some of the different greens that I made up here. But we'll go a little darker. It's a more of a dark violet back there into the back. Put that in the edge of our our bristle here and we'll just lightly sketch through you. Yeah, that's going to work out okay. I like to blur it slightly and uh, he puts in little touches of you know the uh, little leaves and stuff that they that come out here that might be just a touch dark so I'll uh, just add some lighter green to it just whisper it up. Now if you this this kind of little filigree stuff uh, is not easy and you can tend to get a little heavy. So I step way back on the brush here and you can tend to get a little heavy really easy. And um, so what you do is you just take a little background, let it dry, take a little background over it. But it does so many nice things for the painting and lightening it up here, air, making it more airy here so it's something that we definitely do need to add because it just adds so much here to the painting little touches lifts off here and the, the bristle just gives you all kinds of different little looks to it but again you can take some of it off now I you know this out here doesn't look quite as interesting to me and so it's something that I'll probably loosen up lighten up and add some more but you're going to add a, a whole bunch, maybe even into the uh, the lights here, a lighter little green coming down through, and add just a few little touches like this. See, that just uh, really decorates it up. And so, you know, so he would use you know the the, the bit of a bristle, but you know today I like to use the fusion, the edge of the fusion. I use the bristle today, but. Uh, just because it's different and it's what I'm using right now. But we have some um, greens here to uh, kind of sketch down. And I really should probably, we can sketch it lightly here. And uh, roll your brush a little bit, get some different edges there. Pick up you know, different kinds of coloring here. There we go. We'll make some leaves coming off of that edge there, like that. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Let's do some in the dark right out here. Roll your brush. And it just makes all kinds of neat. That's what he did a lot of, the rolling of the brush. And this just makes all kinds of neat little shapes for you out there. And let's take a little light green, yellow, green. Some white, Hansa yellow. I didn't put out any, you know, normally I have out my Daria light yellow as well. Didn't put any out this time because I didn't think I would need it. Yeah, see, I like that. See, it gives that little fractured edge. Just roll the brush. There, like that. That's good. Let's uh, lighten up. So you can see, rolling your brush, taking the edge, coming back up onto these and adding some other lights, light strokes to them, light sides, just like that. He's real casual with it. Um, you might even take some blue with this, you know, to get that bit of blue look of the flowers in there. And this is what you do, you know, let's take a lighter blue-green over here. Nice little blue-green color. Add that right in there. You can lift off. I mean, take you don't have to copy his his look. Take his look and make it yours and add your own kind of calligraphy to it. But take some of his ideas here. How he would do some of this and just make it yours. That's what's really great. But, you know, copying the masters, you know, what it does is it forces you to kind of to kind of think about how they're doing something 
and then that's going to help you change your brush. So, there we go. I like just that real casual look to it. And I, I really like, like, take this kind of gray, maybe a little bit of that sienna in his, and he does this almost like a Queen's Anne lace or something out here. He just always calls his composition summer flowers. A lot of his stuff. Summer flowers in a vase. I don't like that. That's kind of neat. And, uh, and again, you can paint down, you can paint down into that with some of the browns, which is what I'll do to uh, soften it out. But he does, uh, he'll take these colors like this and he'll do lots of little marks. Very fully loaded brush. Roll it. Create some different looks. Use the very chisel of it here, very tip of it here to sketch here. There, pull some marks across, bigger leaves there. And uh, and again, like I say, that, that got a bit big on me. And it's really easy to do this. Just take some of the blues, burnt siennas, that, that side over there, and paint back. Just like this. Paint back, small them down, make them lighter, more airy. Maybe try some of that again with just the tip of the brush. Once you run out of paint, the marks don't get made quite so easy, and we tend, to, and I don't know, we tend to push down, and then that makes them bigger. <laughs> it makes them bigger. So. this okay so I got some of that stuff going in there and some of those greens I need to lighten and brighten them again but you just follow that same kind of thing now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna work on the background and foreground here a little bit before I add some more uh, fun stuff here, but you did get to see me with that round brush. Just come down and roll the brush, roll the brush. That's that's where that 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 key is. But I want to get some more movement and stuff back up over here. So I'm going to grab some of these palette colors that we've been using here, and add some extender, maybe even a little open medium, and we're going to work those. And I'm just going to go right through some of the stuff I did here because uh, I feel it needs to be loosened up anyway. So we'll come right up through there. Let's take some of our yellows and burnt siennas, model into that with a little bit of green. This is what really makes the pretty composition. See the colors now coming in? And don't be afraid to paint out, paint over, paint, paint again things that you've done. But look at the, the prettiness of it coming in here now and that in that all comes from you know that nice dirty palette we have using some of those colors now from the composition and taking them out here I'll just loosen this up I think that's a little too stiff anyway so we'll just do it again <laughs> you know and that's the fun thing about working this like this Put some of those yellows in. We have those small yellow flowers to add. But I think you're getting the thing. It's, it's very, very casual work. Let's put some of that dark right back up in here and let that compositional shadow. You should have a compositional shadow basically on that side over there. There goes my brush on that side over there. That shadow that's cast from that composition. Let's take a little warmer yellows yeah I like some of that yellow in there we're going to put the little yellow flowers in it's all the same you all get to see some of that but this is what makes the pretty the prettiness of the painting working these colors some of these dirty blue grays that we used into the the uh, the wild roses or the small roses and stuff 
We'll carry those out over here. Take some of this down here. Very casual. And you know, it's it's you're you're an optical painter now. This is what he is is an optical painter. So you can uh, just work. You know, just lay the color on there. It doesn't have to be precise or perfect. Or just lay the color on there. Let's take some of this burnt siennas and greens and stuff. But we want some of that sienna coming out here. That's good. Some nice, just some nice sienna. Maybe a, a little cool because this is the shadow side. That red violets, those violets would look pretty in there. See, now see that's that cool. See that cool play against that. That's kind of nice. Let's take some yellow burnt sienna play against that too. Warm cool. You know, this, that's what makes a pretty painting. See that warm cool there. Let's let that green go right in there. Just real, that's, get some of that yellow right here. That's pretty color. Yellows and the greens from that composition, carrying them right down here onto the table. This carries those colors across. There we go. Build that. See, that's what makes it. And it's color. It's, you know, the the color, you know, the technique and stuff is going to change. All of our hands are different and stuff. But taking a little bit and making sure that you get close to those colors. And learning how the masters... You know, the different masters use colors in different ways. Learning that is, to me, one of the most important things. Because Frank Camino, one of the greatest colorists of all that, you know, passed away just a couple years ago, I think it was. You know, he always says that somebody buys a painting or attracted to a painting first through color. And that's why I spent so many years studying and teaching color and color theory. To me, it is the number one thing that you should all study is color theory. I've been studying it my whole life and I will study it my entire career because it's, and then look at how the masters use those colors to bring these things together. It's just so neat. And he had a, just a touch of cool over there. So let's just add some of that. Not exactly the same as his, but you know, this is mine now. Now I, I start to really let the calligraphy go and it starts to become mine, my brush strokes now. Let's take a little open medium, some of the blue and whites, these lighter kind of, he, he pulls them down. It's almost like a reflection of the colors off of the, off of the uh, container. So it's almost like a reflection of the container. Let's get the ultramarine blue in there. There we go. Let's just warm that just a bit. Pull a few little bits down. You can soften that with your paper towel or pull through again. Sometimes I don't like to pull through again because it, um, it, uh, you know, will soften it too much. Let's just pull that container color down right there. That's good. We have some flowers to paint up here onto the table as well. That's got to work in there. That's pretty good. Not exactly the same, but I don't, I'm not going to take the kind of time to do that. It's not necessary. Just get some, just make it a pretty painting. Blur that out a bit. There we go. Yeah, I like the way that's going. Maybe I, I do like his really brave with the cools over here. 
looks a little bit more violet. That's a little too cool. A little too brave there, Dave. So let's rinse that coolness out of that. That's just too much. Let's grab that burnt sienna and green. We'll work that through again. So it gives you, you know, to me, watching something like this and how you work those colors really teaches you a lot. That's why I like to show it really well because it really does teach you a lot about working those colors. Let's take just a touch of that cool back up over here. Travel that to this side. I'll put those other flowers up into there. Then we have the, we have, um, and I might do it not with the bristle, but with the, a fusion here. We have small yellow flowers to add. I have some more darks to add in there, but the small yellow flowers start out with some yellow oxide here. And uh, we'll just kind of, and this is mostly the way he paints, just touches the color. And make sure, like that, you know, it's like Sargent said, make sure you're painting with that juicy brush. But I might want to add some more cools out here just a bit to build that up a bit more before I get too far into some of those yellows. But that's what I'm going to do. Maybe vary the yellow with a little bit of Hansa here and touch into a few small ones out through here. But I'll have some brighter ones as you come to the center. So more Hansa. Just model it like this. And, you know, you're, you're going to basically just lay it on thick colors because you're painting for color now more than anything maybe that with a touch of white here just like that try to vary the marks a bit they're fun little flowers you can make them more into little flowers or do like he did is just make marks of color. Little flowers are kind of fun too. And you have all kinds here that you can do. Push those around a bit. Just trying to read here and maybe a bit of that bit of the burgundy, uh, not burgundy, but the uh, red violet and burnt sienna stuff over here to this side as you come up over this side. Tone it down a bit. There. Just marks in Maybe back to just a bit brighter yellow. So some of the ones that are over on the centers, I will touch in a couple of different yellows. Sometimes I don't even touch the palette. I just pick up a gob of paint and just drag it around. That's what he does. And take that those right up into the centers here of this. So right up like that carry those around. So I'm going to paint, just repeat some of those flowers and stuff down onto the table down here. It's just the same thing here. I will probably add another layer of white and stuff to the uh, front of the painting here to build those up a little bit more. Maybe some just, you know, work the colors again. And what I like to do is just take light colors like this and just work through Paint it, we call it painting in and out. Paint, paint the light, paint the shadow, and it just adds just a little bit more of color going on there into some of those areas. And I like to do that, just to liven that up. And uh, then we'll come back and take a look at it, okay? Alrighty, gotta hear thunder out into the distance. I might have to shut off the cameras. It, thunderstorms, summer, they come here, we, we can't turn run cameras when thunderstorms are here. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, 
then we'll come back and take a look at, at uh, some more of that. But doesn't that add so much? I need to do a little more in there. And I'll see you in just a minute. Thank you. 
Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, it's been actually about a day and a half because we've had just a, a large variety of thunderstorms came through. So I just kind of painted away. So you got to see in those last clips how I put everything all together and, uh, you know, really, really built up with some nice texture up into this area that really helps that, you know, uh, you know, pull forward here. Now, I know it's a couchoir. If it was me, I would put a little bit more shadows and stuff into some back areas. But overall, couchoir is a really great way for you to, you know, use it like I do the two brush technique, use the bristle against the fusion, get some different types of textures, practice your brush calligraphy, getting different types of little marks and put it in there, and really concentrating on not overworking your colors on your palette. That's kind of key. So those colors are laid off on the brush and you get some of that nice color modulation through those marks and uh, that just adds a lot of interest and stuff. The frame that I have here I built for it this is like I've showed some of you that are in the the memberships and stuff how to build a frame. It costs me I this is about twenty dollars or so worth of materials to build a frame like this. It's one of the things we do here at the gallery is to do a lot of frames, a lot of building of it. And I have some videos on there uh, exactly how I go about building in the membership sense of building linen line. This is, this is a nice, this is a beautiful rough linen, uh, linen lined uh, frames like this. They're really super easy um, and a lot easier than a lot of people think. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. This paint is just super thick. I mean, it's just bumpy thick right in there. It's really great. I dried it really well. And I gave it one coat. I just gave it one coat of satin varnish, of the Heritage Satin Varnish. I have a varnish video up onto the channel, too, for those of you that um, want to watch that, you know, all that. I also took the time to, let's see, he's right back there. <laughs> this side. Everything in the camera is reversed sometimes, so back over there. Finished up that little boy portrait. Now it'll be up on the channel here in the next day or two, uh, showing you some of that... Um, those uh, those bister, uh, bister techniques that were used by the masters in the 18th and 19th centuries, and uh, which is a really again a nice master study, and I'll show you how I do the the portraits and stuff with that. Those are those go really fast, and you know I know I know some of you are not portrait painters. I'm not. This is like my only my eighth one that I've ever done, um, but portraits teach your eye a lot about color tone, quality of color, color tone. And so I really, really encourage you, especially beginners, to try some of the portraits because that really helps define your eye for getting the right type of color. And I'll explain more about that in that particular video, okay? So those of you that are in the memberships that, that support the channel, uh, I don't know if a lot of you don't know that, you know, our channel here is a free channel. It's supported by... Um, everything that we give to the industry so it is you know for your support of it stuff really helps us out as well um, but everyone that is in the memberships I'll put uh, the photos the reference photos of the Couchois one I'll put it in a, re a photo of my final version of it and uh, so you can have some uh, some reference as you go about painting it okay so give it a try and you can make it any size if you want to make a smaller study of it and stuff you can but it, it's it's just it's you know when you get all these textures on it, it's just a floral full of life and I just I love the light and the dark and how, the color and more than anything else I think it's all of the marks all the textured marks and stuff in it especially around into this area just really help fun study we got a lot more of those to do we're going to do some studies like this of some of the masters too and those of you that love to paint westerns with me we'll do a study of Remington because he was you know he is like the uh, you know the undisputed master of all of the westerns and his techniques were really great and so we'll do some of those so hopefully uh some of you will become members as well along the channel all right okay thanks so much guys and i look forward to painting with you again we'll do the boy we'll do some more flowers some westerns lots more coming and i'll see you next time thanks bye-bye